Boom! What's going on, everybody? It's a beautiful spring day, and I'm here at the Rock Quarry where they're having the first antique truck show of the year. They have several of them here at this Rock Quarry every year, so I thought I'd come out and see what's going on. And what I'm doing is I'm going to talk about a Neo Scale Models Mac H model cab over truck. That's what I'm going to do a product review on. But first, what I want to talk about is the most important part of a semi truck, and that's the fifth wheel. In the thumbnail, that is a picture of a real Freehoff locking fifth wheel. That is the fifth wheel that started and makes the basis for all of the modern day fifth wheel trucks that we have out there from your pickups all the way up to all your semi trucks. And what I'm doing now is I'm standing behind an H model Mac that actually has an original Fruhoff automatic locking fifth wheel. The fifth wheel that revolutionized and made all modern day fifth wheels work and made hitching up trucks and trailers so, so much easier today. And it's right here. All things start with a knee. It was easy to turn a two-wheeled horse-drawn cart, but two wheels were not enough. So someone invented a four-wheeled cart. That presented a problem, how to turn it. <laughs> a need was created and someone had to invent a way to turn the cart. The obvious solution, turn the front axle. Many ideas were tried. Some were successful, but many failed. The real problem was how to connect the bottom of the cart to the front axle so that it would turn and maintain stability for the cart. Again, many ideas were tried. Then in 1800, someone came up with the idea of putting a fifth wheel on a four-wheeled cart. The fifth wheel became a coupling device to attach the front axle to the carriage bottom. That allows the carriage to easily turn left or right. The fifth wheel also would provide stability to the vehicle. Manufacturers placed a horizontal wheel on the cargo frame that allowed the axle to pivot on its own. This worked wonders for stability and maneuverability. The automobile came along to carry people then the idea to carry large amounts of merchandise and supplies to manufacturers caused another need. A larger vehicle or a trailer that could move large quantities of material. Enter Charles Hay Martin, salesman and engineer for the Knox Motor Company. While working at Knox, he met Herman G. Farr, also an engineer for Knox. Farr had developed a device that was destined to revolutionize the semi-trailer industry, the fifth wheel. After leaving Knox, Charles Martin became sales manager for R. L. Morgan of Morgan Truck. While at Morgan, he designed a road tractor, which he later sold to Knox Motor Company. <laughs> the vehicle was given the name Knox Motor Tractor. Realizing what Herman Farr's invention of the fifth wheel meant, Charles Martin was able to capitalize on Farr's invention. In 1915, Martin founded the Martin Rocking Fifth Wheel Company. Farr's invention was patented and the official documents listed Martin as the assignee. Farr's invention would be the cornerstone product for the company. Charles Martin's younger brother, John A. Martin, was listed as the inventor of the tractor-trailer attachment on March 12, 1918. More freight to move meant more vehicles were needed to move the ever-increasing amount of freight. Another need to be filled. Enter Otto Newman and August Fruhoff. They were here to fill this need. The two men invented the semi-trailer in 1914. To couple the tractor to the trailer, they invented their version of a fifth wheel. 
and a pin hitch coupling, which they used until 1916. Then they adopted an improved version of the fifth wheel offered by the Martin Rocking Fifth Wheel Company. The Martin Rocking Fifth Wheel was round in shape, giving us the nickname Fifth Wheel. It rocked on hinges, making travel on unpaved or rolling roads much, much easier. This was a great improvement on other types of primitive hitches. Fruhoff used the Martin Rocking Fifth Wheel Hitch on all of their semi-trailers. However, August and Otto wanted to end the dependence on the Martin Rocking Fifth Wheel Company. So the two men turned to the old methods of making parts and equipment from scratch. So they turned their engineers loose to develop a fifth wheel. The Fruhoff engineers led by E.F. Hartwick created and patented their own fifth wheel. In late 1919, Fruhoff stopped using the Martin Rocking fifth wheel and began using the Fruhoff fifth wheel. Another need came up, and that was the need for efficiency in hooking the tractor to the semi-trailer. To meet the need, Fruhoff in 1926 introduced the automatic semi-trailer in which the coupling and uncoupling of the tractor were accomplished mechanically by the motion of the tractor. This is the basis for all fifth wheel hitches today. A single driver, rather than a crew of men, was able to hitch and unhitch his tractor in minutes, saving time and increasing efficiency. Just as the Martin rocking fifth wheel revolutionized hitching trailers to tractors, Fruhoff's automatic semi-trailer coupling revolutionized the transportation industry. I will go more into detail on August Fruhoff and Otto Newman in a future video about Fruhoff trailers. So make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell to get notified of all of my future videos. The RV industry started using fifth wheel attachments to towing vehicles in 1929. In 1927, a leading American aircraft designer, Glenn Curtis, developed an aerodynamic house trailer. This presented another need, what to use to move the trailer. Curtis found that his house trailers could be pulled by coops or roadsters that had special fifth wheel hitches installed on them. The trailers were actually manufactured from 1929 all the way to 1941. <laughs> the trailer frame was constructed of wood and wire. The claim was that the aero car trailer could be safely towed at up to 55 miles per hour using a fifth wheel hitch. I've talked about the backstory of the fifth wheel hitch, but I have yet to tell you what a fifth wheel hitch is. I assume that most of you know all about them, but there may be some viewers that do not know about them. A fifth wheel hitch couples the truck tractor to a semi-trailer. It works like this. A fifth wheel is a hitch attachment that connects a trailer to the U-shaped hitch mounted to the frame of the truck or tractor. This U-shaped hitch then evenly distributes the weight over the truck or tractor. The device rests on hinges, which makes it much more flexible when driving around. A kingpin secures the trailer to the fifth wheel via a locking mechanism inside the U-shaped hitch on the truck or tractor. The fifth wheel allows the front axles of the truck or tractor to move freely on their own. This method of hitching is safer because it distributes the entire weight of the trailer more evenly over the whole frame of the tow vehicle. When it first became used, it was revolutionary to the transportation industry because it allowed trucks the ability to carry large amounts of freight safely and hitch up quickly. 
And this is the 1960 Mac H673ST COE tractor by Neo Scale Models. It's Neo item number 64000. It comes in the Neo Scale Models hardboard sleeve with black plastic base and clear plastic lid. Also, it has that little uh, mirror piece in the back so you can see the other side of the truck as you can see in this picture. Now, I'll go on and get him out. Now these plastic display cases are really nice because they keep our models dust free and dusting is a pain. Be careful when you clip them open because they do kind of want to be a pain. Now normally this truck is screwed down with two Phillips head screws to the base plate but I already took those out for convenience. Now let's go on and pick this guy up closer so we can really see him. There we go. Isn't that sharp? Let me move my thumb out of the way there. There we go. It rides on six spoke Dayton wheels on the front and the rear. It has duals on the rear. Those wheels are painted a real light cream colored. And then they have the chrome center caps with a MAC lettering tampoed in the center. Now they're not really chrome center caps, they're a hot stamping process right there, which holds the which is a great compromise. It gives a nice chrome look and it doesn't actually require the extra ABS parts to chrome plate. There's the fuel tanks on both sides and then they have two black bands and those bands are what would normally uh, mount them to the frame. There's a step here and it looks like an air cleaner there or maybe it's just the pillow that the cab mounts on. There's also right here a step, a step, and then it goes up to this diamond plate piece here with a little walkway. See how the cab rolls around? Also you can see how this is not a more a traditional COE that we're used to where the cab is flat with the sidewall and the flat with the front. It actually sets back a little piece and you've got just a semblance of a hood here. This is more known as a bubble nose or a bull nose type cab. There's a Mac Bulldog logo and that is a photo etched metal piece and it is applied right there on the toolbox door. There's a little vent into the sleeper. This uh, grab bar is a wire piece that's bent and put in place. The door handle and the mirror are resin pieces and they are um, then applied after being painted silver. The roof lights are individual pieces. We'll turn up this way. The roof lights here are all individual pieces. There's five of them and they're painted silver. Then they are uh, tipped with a little bit of orange paint so that it looks like they have amber lenses then they're individually applied to the cab. Two barrel air horn over here on the driver's side is on the edge rather than right up on top. It's rolled over on the edge. Pretty common back then. Round to the front and you can see it has a Minnesota license plate right there. A nice straight bumper. The uh, Headlights are individual jewel style type with sealed beam pattern on them, as are the little individual jewel style marker lights painted amber right inside. The pieces of the grill are all photo etched, and then it has Mac written right there and the bulldog on the hood. And then it has another little photo etched piece right there in the center of that. The turn signals here on each side are molded into the body and then they're painted orange. The body is a light blue with a dark blue stripe and then an even lighter blue ab above the stripe. Pretty cool coloring. On both mirrors here you can see where it says Mac and then it has Mac on this one. In black tampos they're also molded in with the black cab so they look really cool these mirrors do. You have uh, vacuum formed front windows, side windows and back window. And they put a center bar here, which is not an actual center bar, it's just black tampo, and then black around them for gaskets, and individual photo etched windshield wipers. And be real careful with them, they're easy to flick off, and they're not easy to put back on, 
and they're also easy to lose if you flip them off. Just touching them with a the thumb can do it. So be real careful with those. They're the most fragile part of these models. It's a resin cab sitting on a die cast frame, so it's a very sturdy system built for it. And the cabs will hold a lot, but those just not so great. And you can break some of these other little ancillary parts like your mirrors off fairly easily. But you can do that on any of these models. On the passenger side here, she's got a single exhaust stack and it's a straight pipe going up. Then there's another box here, steps, and then the diamond plate. Really cool how they kind of gave you a walkway, catwalk here beside the cab. You can get around it and wash your windshield real easily that way. Both fuel tanks have filler caps on them. Around to the back here. Turn them around. Start off, you can see it has another Minnesota commercial plate and individual jewel style brake lights. Very nice vintage tread pattern on each tire. And then it has a kingpin here that I, when these trucks were made, these H models were the very first runs that Neo made and the fifth wheel wasn't quite uh, right for hitching up to basically any truck. So I always, I honed them out and I always did that for all my customers. That way they could hitch their trucks up easily to anything. Tipped up, you can see the top of the differential there and you can see here it has a bracket for mounting that exhaust pipe here. Also you can see it has the transmission back end and drive shaft. Round underneath we have Neo Scale Models tampoed there 1960-164 scale Mac H673ST tampoed on the other frame rail made in China tampoed on the front axle and a tie rod there, bottom of the engine detail, transmission detail, drive shaft, rear differentials, nice spring uh, rear suspension, and spring front suspension. There is also nice vintage tread pattern on the front. Now there are no steerable axles on this one, but that's okay. It is a static model that's meant really to sit on a shelf, not be played with. They do roll for, for the most part. These trucks do roll. You can see the axles roll, but they're not really meant to be played with. They're meant to sit on a shelf. And now to show it off with a trailer, because, I mean, how many of you would buy a tractor and just not want a trailer? So I want you to know what it looks like with a trailer hitched up. And I've got a DCP vintage 40-foot trailer right here hitched up to it. Now these trucks would be great sitting on a diorama. You could set up a vintage truck show as I had as you saw me standing in front of in the other part of the video. Or you could have it as a farmer that's fixed up a truck for his field. Or just like this you could have it running down the road with a nice trailer. Just up to you. And that is the Neo Scale Models 164 scale resin cab on die cast frame, 1960 Mac H673 ST COE with vintage 40 foot dry van trailer that was made by die cast promotions. We take the fifth wheel for granted today, but in times past, many ways were tried to hitch up two wheeled carts and four wheeled wagons and carriages to horses. It wasn't until somebody said, let's add a fifth wheel to the carriage. <laughs> I suppose that person was considered a nutcase. But when they finally did, it worked. I hope you enjoyed learning about the fifth wheel and the 1960 Mac H673 ST COE truck. Neo scale models. They made their models out of a hybrid of resin and die cast to ensure durability and limited quantities. To learn more about resin, please grab my free report on resin versus diecast with the link in the description below. Also, you can purchase one of these 1960 Mac H673 ST COE trucks with another link in the description below. 
Remember, they are no longer being made and supplies are running out everywhere. So order now before it's too late and the link disappears forever. Thanks for watching everyone. Please smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for more great diecast and resin videos. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.